guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game It's a Wonderful World and of course its expansions, War or Peace, Corruption and Ascension. Two separate expansions that will provide unique twists to the game It's a Wonderful World. If you want to see our base video for the game It's a Wonderful World, link down below in the description. But the idea of the game is you're trying to create a wonderful world, a unique society. Everyone else will be doing the same. In the game you'll be gathering cards from a deck you'll be drafting them, passing cards from player to player, and players will pass you their cards, and then you're going to place them down, whether you use them to be recycled to gather much needed resources, or attempt to build them. As you build them, you're going to increase your value and your resources that you're going to gain and give throughout the game, and you're going to attempt to score the most points. After a certain number of rounds in the game, you're going to score up everything you've got, and all of the little points, you'll tally them up using a unique score tracker from one of the new expansions, and whoever has the most is the winner. We'll take a look at both of the expansions attached to the base game down below and then I'll come and give you my review for both expansions which I'll have time stamped so you can choose if you just want to see one of them or not down below in the description. Choice is yours or just go and simply watch this and we'll talk about all of it. Welcome to It's a Wonderful World, and in the game, it is a wonderful world. This is a wonderful game. I reviewed it, reviewed it highly, and our website reviewer, Brian, also reviewed this game very highly. Excellent, excellent game, but we're going to be talking about the expansions more so. Now, in both expansions uh, are presented here in uh, this little setup we have. The first one is going to be War or piece and you're going to have this little pack of cards here it's like a little secret box that's going to come in the game and you're also going to be getting these these are like campaign booster packs as you play each of the levels you're going to be introducing new and unique cards to the game uh, the other expansion is uh, corruption and ascension which is going to give you this new deck of cards here which is separate from this one here but used in the same way it's going to be giving you additional little tokens here which are just values of three for the regular values of one that you would normally get in the game. You're also going to be getting a extra two characters you can play with, and it goes up to seven players now, as opposed to the five, and a new scoreboard. The original one was a paper one that you could write on. This one here is dry erase and plays up to seven players, so it makes it very nice and easy for you to be able to basically continue playing the game without having to print out new pieces of paper if need be. And uh, this little piece here, this little ditty, is going to actually be used for the expansion. This is, I guess, a little spoiler for you. Uh, the base game for It's a Wonderful World comes with five characters. This board here, all of these resources and the expansions come with it, give you a couple extra as well. These little guys here are basically additional points you can score throughout the game and they give you attached uh, details to certain cards you're using and a round track where the game plays four rounds. You're going to be flipping these guys over. How the game is played, very quickly. What you're going to do is draw a certain number of cards from here and from here for each player. They're going to choose one, pass it right or left, depending on the round. And then they're going to gather a certain number of cards. From there, they'll choose to either recycle those cards or they will choose to keep those cards. If they keep them, they're going to basically try and put resources on them. Each card is going to have resource value here and something that they're going to produce as well as points at the end of the game. Uh, and so they'll keep them in front of them. If they're going to recycle them, they're simply going to take the resource value on the right-hand side of the card. In this case, it's going to be a, a gray resource. And they're going to then use that resource in one of two ways. They'll put it on a card based on the color, or they'll put it on their player board, which they can then use for a red wild resource. After uh, we go through all of the cards, we're then going to simply place as much resources as we possibly can on our cards, build them by placing them under uh, on top of this area here, and then we're going to gather resources from the left area to the right area. We'll start with gathering these based on which ones we have, so this player would get two of those. We go to black, green, yellow, and then blue finally. And we're also going to gauge however many each player has, and we'll gain these little tokens based on who has the most of that specific resource. And then we'll start the next round. We'll flip this over. Players are then going to draft the opposite way, rinse and repeat. Look at the end of the game scoring by simply taking these guys here. Maybe it was like this is your end game, and you're going to get points. So in this case, you'll get four points for this card and one point for each one of these gals you have. And also these gals are also worth, worth one point on their own. And you'll tie your score, and whoever has the most is the winner. Now the expansions. The expansions come with this new deck of cards here. This new deck of cards is going to be a, a variety of unique cards that are going to go into the game when you draft, and the rules will tell you how that works. Some cards are going to have more value to them, higher number of resources, and a combination of requirements. So you'll be looking at stuff like this. If You'll need one of these guys and a white one, which will score you seven points for each one. Some cards are going to reduce resources when you produce them. 
and other cards have some unique twists and turns to them when it comes to scoring as well. So for instance, this one here is going to give you 25 points all for itself, and this one over here will score you uh, points based on the number of these guys here. You have the multipliers and stuff. Uh, basically just unique new cards to the set here. This is a dry erase board. It's very nice. It's very usable. I in fact recommend it. And then of course two new players. And all of these cards, if you don't want to play with the base mode, you can play with the alternative mode as well. The War and Peace is a, I guess I'd call it a legacy game of sorts in which you're going to start by setting the game up as normal, opening this bad boy up, and then playing a game based on what it requires. I'm going to show you some cards from the first two just to give you an idea of how they work. If you don't want spoilers though, we can just you can just hit up the review section, go ahead and link in, link in the description. The first one shows you packs in which you're going to be trying to gather resources from recycling them and instead of gathering them for yourself, you'll trade them in and place them over here and something will happen based on whether or not you fill this up or not. So you can trade your resources as opposed to just simply taking them from the recycling. And if you fill this up, something unique happens at the end. Uh, then you're going to have things like statues. Players will get to choose them based on how they did in the game, and these things will produce based on if they are able to make them. They're basically free cards that you can craft that start in front of you. Or simply gathering a member or PAX uh, director, in which case, whether you won or not, they're going to give you something unique, like you can turn one of these little gals into a wild, or this one here, you can turn two of them based on whether you won or lost the last match. Players are going to get some type of advantage, uh, and always an advantage, regardless of whether they won or lost, but unique choices. And you're going to continue to go through each of these things with new, unique new packs and new cards and whatnot, and some of them will be used throughout the game. You can simply rinse and repeat. Others, you'll get to keep them for when you want to play the game fully, but that's pretty much what you get. You get a legacy expansion, and then you get a base game upgrade expansion that includes uh, unique new rules and twists and turns to the game itself. So let's come up and discuss the game now. Like I said, it's much for full reviews for the main game. If you really want to, I'll have some links in the description. You can take a look at that. It's a Wonderful World got my seal of approval. It's an excellent game. I think most people would agree it's an excellent game. If you like Tableau management games, It's a Wonderful World is the game for you. I recommend it strongly, probably in my top three list of all time. The expansions. Well, I'll have these timestamps so you can choose between them. We'll start with uh, War and or or peace war or peace they, 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 they confusing for me for some reason you have war or peace corruption and ascension or ascension and corruption the or and the and i don't know for some reason gets stuck in my head war or peace basically how it works it's a legacy function of the game you're going to play throughout a campaign mode that you're going to add unique things to your tableau that you normally not start with in the base game whether it be a statue that you can now build whether you're a dictator of the uh area that you now preside in that gives you unique powers and benefits and each time you play the game it's going to give you unique upgrades that you can kind of progress yourself in if you're a big fan of legacy games or i guess campaign mode games is something for you it also comes with some additional unique twists like the board at the end of the game uh, you'll be able to basically there's unique powers that will happen after the base game now and that comes included with this you'll just simply attach it to the little arrow at the very end uh, there's also a surprise pack that gives you some unique cards as well i always like more additional stuff being added to the base game but for me, this expansion is it's just fine. Like, I, I don't really much care for campaign-based modes where you're adding things, like, for some reason, just things like this. I never actually ended up using them for the most part because I was so enthralled in the base game. There's so much going on with just that that this kind of, I guess, bogged it down a little too much for me. Maybe it's because my brains don't really, like, align. <laughs> it's not that, not that bright or something. But I'm sitting there going, okay, I've got this and this. However, some of the powers are extremely useful. And it's very, very noticeable. It gives you a an opportunity to kind of advance yourself. You'll notice too, like being the director of the PAX 10, gathering the these little female tokens, you can then utilize them for wilds, which makes it easier to get things like the statue. So you can, obviously the game gives you that benefit to allow you to use and manipulate the new things in the game, making it more viable if you get more points and whatnot and present new challenges and also prevent new opportunities for you as well. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. If you like It's a Wonderful World and you want a campaign mode of the game, you can even play it solo mode, you're going to want to pick up the War or Peace one. Uh, and the quality of the cards are excellent. The fact that you're going to be opening up things, there's unique storylines to each of them. They're all going to give you a little rule book 
which is gonna pop out. It'll explain what the new things you're going to get. It talks about the new boards and whatnot. It explains the unique new cards you're going to get, who chooses what based on who won. And it's, it's, it's very straightforward, very easy to add each of the new rules. It's kind of like super mini expansions, I guess you could even put it in, in that term or that sense as you play throughout the game. And when you get to the end, you get some type of wonderful little surprise. I, mean, I don't want to spoil a lot for you, so my review for, you, for this specific expansion is pretty, pretty simple. I don't want to give you too much information. I already feel like I gave you a little, hopefully not too much, but enough for you to gauge what happens in the game. And you're going to be placing new things in front of you and being able to utilize those things to produce resources to obtain other things that you can get or have to start with in the game. Uh, overall, an excellent expansion for those of you who like that. For me personally, I probably, I'll go through the campaign once and then I'm going to probably revert back to playing the base game and Corruption and Ascension or Ascension and Corruption. This is the expansion for me. It's basically more good for an amazing game. Uh, it adds a new deck of cards that is going to be attached to the main deck. I think in like a three players, it's like you take eight cards from the base set of cards and three from the other or four, and then you put them together and everybody has this new stack of cards they can choose from, giving you more variety, more choices in resources. Some cards are way more challenging than others. Some cards are a lot easier to use. Now, of course, that presents some unique challenges with this expansion. If you get an entire handful of too powerful cards, or everybody does, it can be more difficult to obtain cards in front of you. Now, of course, that is a balancing act, right? Because it's a drafting system. Everybody has access to the same pool of cards other than the first card everybody chooses. So you're likely going to see cards repeated as you go around drafting those cards. And so the balance in play is always going to be pretty stable as far as that goes. The game style or feeling is going to be different each game, however. The unique twists to the expansion for Corruption are, are numerous, but I'll go over a couple of them. One of them being the combination ones where you're going to be gathering certain types of the new building or developments and if you can develop multiple combos of the each each of these two categories you're gonna score a lot of points seven each time not in, not even in addition to how many points those cards alone can give you the fact that you can now lose production resources I didn't like this really that much I didn't use these cards luckily Things I don't like in a game that involves drafting, I don't have to use. I can you turn this into into mush. I can convert it as, as a resource and, and recycle it, right? But it is a unique twist to a, the game. It gives you points. It also gives you two other resources of a different color. And maybe it's going to benefit you. Maybe if they have seven black, you don't really need another black. You can get rid of that. It gives you two green. It's cheaper to use than most cards. So there is... Uh, reliability to why you would want to use those cards. Um, and you're, you're going to run into a lot, a lot of those type of things. Some, some of them are going to give you, when you build the card, they're going to give you resources as well. And then there's also combos attached uh, to them. So there's some cards that will give you like a combination of, of green. For each of the green ones of these guys you have, you're going to get a black resource. So there's a, you, there's a lot of unique mechanics attached to this new expansion. However, they're not like overly complex. They're going to fit into the game, base game very well. Attaching two extra players to the game. I'm never going to play with seven players in It's a Wonderful World, so for me it's blasé. But I guess if you have a family member, if you have a family of six and one person's always missing out on playing It's a Wonderful World, well, now you can play six and then you can you can bring their cousin in as well, I suppose. So you, seven players in a drafting game, it doesn't really matter. The game's not going to take any longer with more players. You draft the cards, it takes just as long as any other number of players. Even a two-player game doesn't matter because everybody's playing together at the same time. It's all in sync. You can play with 50 players and you're still going to have the same number of, of turns and time in the game, which is why it's fine. Adding more players is great. This board here is a lifesaver. This is the one of the main reasons I would ha actually have you buy the expansion. This board is going to write down all your names of the players and then in order you're going to score. No more paper and pencil. And I always have a bunch of these lying around so I'm not gonna have to worry about running out of ink high quality all the components are high quality it gives you more components it gives you more components than you even need which is nice and not not enough or when they give you that like one extra little tidbit in it all the artwork is amazing the gameplay is still beautiful and fun enjoyable there's little nicks I have here and there but that's just based on luck and what cards are drafted in the entire draft overall so I'm not going to really give it any dings as far as that goes this expansion here gets my seal of approval excellent expansion gives you everything you want additional stuff in the game nicer higher uh, quality of the scoreboard and unique mechanics definitely one I would suggest getting a few legacy players war or peace is one I would 
I would perchance or campaign members pick up as well in that combination. I strongly recommend this uh, Corruption and Ascension though, it's my personal favorite of the two. But like I said, you're gonna have people who like both. And if you are interested in both, you can check out the link down below, link in the description. It's going to provide you with the ability to buy either or both of the expansions for It's a Wonderful World. If you don't have the base game, like I said, you should pick this game up. It, it's, it is wonderful. They did a great job of it. Always, always, <laughs> always a game I'm going to be keeping in my collection. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game e expansions review for the game It's a Wonderful World, Corruption and Ascension, War or Peace, either one you can choose to pick up down below. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you can see every single one of my videos because I know how enthralled you are with my voice and face and so it would just make sense if you did that so you can continue to see all of our videos every day 4pm Monday through Saturday. You can also check out our website unfilteredgamer.com we have our holiday list guide for you guys who are interested in uh, picking up certain games for the family during the holiday season. There are I mean, Amazon links and all good stuff like that. Also, our live streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games just like this one live on stream and we give away games as well. If you want to join us there, that'd be greatly appreciated. Go ahead and follow us there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to uh, delving into war or peace with you and not sliding into corruption and ascending with you next time. Solid.